Now a while ago I did a uh, video on the Mini Ice Age and at that time I thought that the Earth's eccentricity was only going to go up to 8% in 2024. However there's some new science now that says it's going to go up to 13%. And why is it new? Well there's uncertainty always about the position of the Earth. It's very difficult to measure. Um, the angular measurements you need to measure against the stars aren't that accurate. And the angular measurements to other planets as well, well we don't know where they are. So the position of the Earth is always shrouded in a bit of uncertainty. But the distance from the Sun, uh, we've only really been able to measure accurately using special optical instruments and satellites for the last 25-30 years. And using the new measurements and measuring the perturbation of the Earth from different passing planets, there's now a new estimate for what the elongation of the orbit is going to be. So I thought I'd do the maths based on this new 13% because it's an inverse square relationship and you're on the end of some very large figures so the difference between the squares of the closest orbit and the furthest orbit are going to be massive um, and they're going to go up a lot more from 13% from 8% to 13% so I've done the maths and the news isn't all that good so let's have a look So let's have a look at the maths of the next ice age. Exactly how do these ice ages get kicked off? So how does it start? Well, the amount of heat, um, that is to say the total radiation received by the Earth from the Sun, is subject to a physical formula called the inverse square law. Now, in physics, an inverse square law is any physical law stating that a specified physical quantity, in this case radiation, is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the source of that physical quantity. So what does that mean? Well, it means if the distance is 2, then only a quarter of the radiation at the object's surface is received. If the distance is 4, then only a sixteenth of the radiation is received, and so on. Well, naturally, um, as these distances get larger, as they get into the millions, the square numbers get larger. And this means that the differences between um, the square of, for example, 2 and the square of 4 is much greater than the actual difference between the two numbers. So the difference between those two numbers is 2, but the difference is 8. And this is the key to understanding this. Now, why 24, 20, 24 is very important is that in 2024 all of the large planets will be on the same side of the Earth's orbit as part of a phenomenon that's called the Milankovitch cycle discovered by a gentleman called Milankovitch and this happens every 100,000 years but on this occasion the elongation will occur at the worst possible time when Earth's northern hemisphere is in winter and that is when the largest proportion of the Earth is the coolest and because the distance change is so small Many people, even scientists who have not calculated it, assume that the effect will be fairly trivial, but it's not. What you have to bear in mind is that humanity has never seen one of these events. Funnily enough, the last one happened around about 100,000 years ago. Strange that, isn't it? They are known to trigger rapid glaciation, and what do we mean by rapid? You're talking within 50 years the entire northern hemisphere being locked into ice. That is what scientists now think, having examined the ice cores, the original glaciation 
I only took 50 years to build up. That is very fast. So let's have a look at the numbers. Now, normally the Earth is 149 million, 149 million 600,000 kilometers from the Sun. It's 149.6 million. And the square of this is 2.238 blah 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 times 10 to the 16th. Now that 10 to the 16th means it's a huge number. And I'm using this what is called scientific notation to avoid filling up the page with zeros which your mind couldn't cope with anyway. I certainly know mine can't. Now in 2024 I said it was a small difference. Well it's 13 percent further away from the Sun is what we're guessing. And the reason we're guessing is nobody really knows because we've never been through one of these before and we normally measure eccentricity and the maximum eccentricity of uh, the Earth is known to be 13%. So it's going to be at least 13% um, further away from the Sun. Um, could be more, we don't know because we haven't been through one of these events before. As I say, they happen every 100,000 years. And so let's have a look at what the square of this the square of this is 2.8577 to the 16th. So that's, that's the square of the increased distance. And if we subtract those two figures, then that gives us a difference of 61970660000000. You see what I mean by filling up the page with zeros. Now, 1% of our original orbit, the circular orbit that we're on at the moment, is 2238016000. So, if we divide this figure here, which is the difference between the two orbits, by our 1% of our original orbit, we're going to see what the difference is in terms of how much radiation we receive. And here's the bad news. Something like 27 0.68% drop in solar radiation. So 13% in difference, difference in distance with these huge figures gives us a reduction in solar radiation of almost a third. And this is how ice ages get started. With rapid glaciation caused by as little as 10 years of extreme cold. And we're talking about the years 2019 through to 20. 29 as being the coldest years with the cold peaking in 2024 as we are the furthest away from the Sun. And extreme cold comes with increased snowfall in the Northern Hemisphere and we're already starting to see some of this this year as I've discussed in some previous videos. Now this produces a lock-in effect due to all the ice and the increased cloud uh, reflecting the solar radiation, it extends the period of unusual for us, cold. Now, a word about ice ages, we're actually in an ice age efficient, officially at the moment. Um, I know it doesn't seem like that because we're in what's called an interglacial period when there are no glaciers, so the earth is relatively warm. And what this Milankovitch cycle does is kicks us back into the normal state for the Earth. Now we have to remember that the Ice Age is the normal state for the Earth. What we're seeing now is totally abnormal warmth. And you have to get your mind around that. And if you don't believe me, you can Google Ice Ages, you can do your own research, and you will see that we are in fact at the end of one of the occasional warm periods that happen 
during an ice age. So, so much for global warming. <laughs> so if you found this useful, please like, share it with your friends and subscribe. Thank you very much. Well, you could subscribe to Arduino Tronic or just go jump in a lake.